G'day everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone video update today, the 17th of March 2016. My name's Chris Nitzo. This update is sponsored by a major sponsor, Campbell Scientific Australia, when measurements matter. Folks, today's update will focus specifically on Queensland because that is the only state that is receiving a lot of decent weather from the monsoon. Also, the only state that is expecting to see any low pressure systems or any possible cyclonic development. So here is the first low located here in the southwestern parts of the peninsula. It's slowly drifting to the north. The surface circulation is drifting to the north. There's also a, another system that's starting to form off the coast of Cairns between Cairns and Cooktown right now. Looking at the Bureau of Meteorology synoptic chart for 4pm this afternoon, we can see the first low over the Cape York Peninsula, the second one located just east of Cooktown here on the bomb map, but it's it's pretty difficult to actually pinpoint the centre of this just yet. There's also another low attached to a monsoon trough out around about 160 degrees east. All of these systems, or these two systems, should move to the east. This one here, a little bit more problematic in its forecast, but at this stage, it'll, it'll move northeast. It may form into one big giant oval-shaped low, and that entire, uh, the entire region here of low pressure will move away to the southeast, and that's what a lot of computer models are doing with it. One day totals, and we see a lot of heavy rain has, has formed across the north, and western parts of, or northwestern parts of the peninsula and also the southwestern parts of the peninsula here. We also have moderate to heavy falls that formed across the northeast coast of Queensland in the 24 hours to 9 o'clock this morning. And take a look at that over the week. We can see the monsoon's primary influence has been on northern Queensland. Anywhere north of about Townsville has seen significant rainfalls across the last week. Also, that extends a long way inland too throughout the northern and central peninsula uh, and also parts of the northwest of Queensland as well. So there has been, certainly for Queensland, this has been a very active phase of the monsoon. Not so much the case if you live in the other two states, the Northern Territory and Western Australia. Bureau's Tropical Cyclone Outlook for the Coral Sea mentions the fact that we do see a slight increase in potential for tropical cyclone development over the weekend and into early next week as the monsoon trough deepens across the northern Coral Sea. Conversely, we see less potential in the Gulf of Carpentaria as the low across the Cape York Peninsula pushes in a northerly direction but not expected to reform. The UK Ensemble loses focus and loses track of this system fairly shortly over the next 12 to 24 hours, in fact, and therefore it becomes a non-event. The CMC computer model pushes this system northeast, crosses the coast around Princess Charlotte Bay, and then tracks fairly rapidly away to the east-southeast. And the GS GFS wants to toss the coin, and at the moment it is tracking it in a northeasterly direction, pushes it away fairly rapidly to the east like all the other computer models. However, it does have a secondary option where the system is extremely weak and pushes up here towards the northwest in association with a developing ridge to the southwest of it. This other low that we're seeing developing off the coast of Cairns to Cooktown is expected to move in an easterly direction fairly quickly over the next few days in response to a developing upper level trough uh, and a possible an upper level low as well as the monsoonal trough. The combination of all of these systems will seek to guide anything that forms in the Coral Sea in an east to southeasterly direction for the foreseeable future. So we've got the northwesterly monsoonal winds We've also got the upper level trough, and if we do get an upper level low, the combination of all of those things will push it, and fairly rapidly, away to the east. And there's very little doubt, in fact, you, if you were going to put a percentage chance on it, you'd put about 90, 95 to 97% chance that this will happen. The only interesting thing out of this is, will it become a tropical cyclone, and if so, will it impact Vanuatu or New Caledonia? There's also the possibility of a secondary low pressure system developing after this primary low develops off the coast of Cairns, one to develop a little bit further to the north and a little bit further to the east. I mean, both systems should adopt a fairly similar track here to the southeast. So the monsoon is certainly going to rage away in the Coral Sea, but there's nothing to drag these systems back towards the Queensland coast. All they will do is take a lot of the moisture away from this monsoon and pull it away to the east. And so we should see a fining up across Queensland and a decrease in monsoon influence right across the north of the nation. So that was the GFS. This is the UK Met showing very similar sort of scenario here. The track away to the east very quickly. It's tropical cyclone strength system but somewhere between Vanuatu and New Caledonia. No change in there in the FIM model. 
The only other model that gives any sort of hope is the Navgem, and it's consistently the worst performing computer model in the world. But it does give us some hope that there may be a low pressure system that sticks around somewhere up here near the North Peninsula, in which case the monsoon may not be all dead and buried for us. There may be a, you know, a secondary boom in weather activity associated with it for the far north of Australia. But look, as I said, this is the model that is the worst performer in the world. So I certainly wouldn't go putting too much of my faith in any scenario that this model ends up showing of most uh, of most benefit though is this is this push here to the east because it ve basically verifies every other computer model with regards to this low pressure system here Similar scenario shown by the Access model, that's the Bureau of Meteorology's computer model. We can see the low just off the coast here at Cairns, tracking away to the east. As we go into Sunday, we can see that the system continues tracking away to the east on Monday, pushes very rapidly away to the east on Tuesday. Uh, it's down around uh, New Caledonia. And uh, then on Wednesday, if we finally look at it, it gets absorbed into an extra tropical system, uh, an extra tropical low here and uh, loses its tropical characteristics and we have nothing left across the north you can see the monsoon influence very very weak if if any at all is present at that time so let's not drag this out uh, too much longer folks let's have a look at tomorrow's rainfall as that low does develop very close to the coast tomorrow or overnight tonight and into tomorrow we could still see some moderate falls of rain along the cassowary coastline that's this coastline between sort of cardwell uh, through to around about Innisfail or even Cairns if you're lucky uh, we'll also see a continuation of the monsoonal influence up here in the northwest peninsula great vision coming to us uh, from places like Thursday Island and Horn Island these places have really missed out in the Torres Strait and so it's just uh, everyone there is extremely happy that the monsoonal rains have finally arrived albeit so late in the season Across the Northern Territory, we'll see a drying out of most of this region, except for isolated showers and thunderstorms closer to the northwest, northwestern coast and the adjacent northwestern inland region. Across the interior of WA, we've got a trough system here that's going to be creating showers and thunderstorms across the interior, extending possibly even to the southern Gascoyne coastline as well. All right, as we move on to Saturday, we'll see that Coral Sea low starting to push east and starting to push east fairly rapidly. The possibility there, as I mentioned, that, that there could be another weak low way up here near the Torres Strait, and therefore we're going to continue to see the possibility here of the monsoonal influence across the Torres Strait continuing to be quite strong, uh, much less uh, much less influencing, sorry, a much weaker influence on the northern peninsula and almost no influence any further south than the Northern Peninsula. Across uh, the Northern Territory, the monsoon pushes northwards, and we have a fairly dry air mass left, although we do have a trough system in through the interior parts of WA, and that trough system will just be enhancing the instability here across the western parts of the Northern Territory. As long as there's just enough moisture to help kick off some storms, there should be a scattering of showers and storms, particularly in the southwestern parts of the top end. Uh, once again, the interior of WA firing up, but uh, that does not extend to the coastal regions of the Pilbara or Kimberley. As we go to Sunday, the interior trough here across WA realigns itself in a more north-south direction. Once again, we see showers and storms possible across the western parts of the Territory, but very dry now into the Gulf of Carpentaria, into the eastern half of the Northern Territory. Most of Queensland will be dry. Some upper-level troughs pushing through, uh, some very short-wave upper troughs pushing through the southern part of Queensland, and therefore creating some isolated showers and storms. And in fact, if we just take a look back at the, at the last couple of days, so and we'll look back tomorrow, uh, and then Saturday and then Sunday you can see that those troughs do influence the weather a little bit they do create showers and storms throughout the time there is also the possibility here across the inland parts the adjacent inland parts of the coastline and not shown really well here on this map but there is the possibility that we might see enough moisture and enough instability to just kick off some convective showers across those coastal regions on Monday, uh, we have a little bit more chance of those showers and possibly some thunderstorms developing across coastal Queensland or the, the hinterland region of, Queen, of coastal Queensland, extending into the central highlands and coalfields region. Uh, once again, we still have Cape York Peninsula showers and storms, non-monsoonal in nature. You can see the monsoon still raging away up here in the Coral Sea. All those lows are gone, though, so there's no there's no real 
chance of anything significant across Queensland. And the western parts of the Northern Territory once again possibly firing up again and the eastern interior of WA including the Kimberley region possibly firing up with showers and storms again as that trough just sits there and doesn't move. Possibility in the medium term for a low around Christmas Island, however, we're not expecting that low to A, intensify into a cyclone, or B, hit the northwest coast of WA. Folks, that's all i got time for tonight. I will probably have the final public video update tomorrow night. Once that low does form and starts pushing away, then there's no reason to update you any further on that. If you want updates while that low is moving away, and specifically for its effects on Vanuatu, Fiji, maybe, or New Caledonia, more likely, please become an OCC subscriber. Head to OzCycloneChasers.com.au and click on subscribe to OCC. Thanks for watching. I'll have another up one for you tomorrow evening. Enjoy your Friday.